Oh boy, do we got a lot to cover in this episode. Everything from preparations of weathering. Coupler heights. We look at the prototype with unique loads. Unique techniques while weathering. It's a little bit different, but you'll like it. As well as just dull coating and finishing a car from beginning to end. So kick back, roll an axle, and maybe you'll accidentally learn something on this episode of the GN 1970. 70s. Today we're taking a look at how do you fade a logo in this application. It is a Great Northern PS4000. I use micro brushes. These are just small brushes to be able to apply chalks and paints. You can find them online or at your local hobby shop. But nonetheless, I'm using Doc O'Brien's weathering powders and using the micro brush to be able to just fade this particular logo. Uh, once I've applied this, I'm going to end up taking the trucks off of the car so you don't get uh, any of the clear coat on them, bring it into the spray booth, and I shoot it with Krylon Color Max Clear. This is a flat finish. This seals in the white chalk on the goat as well as preps the car for future weathering. Another step I take for preparing for future weathering is covering up any area or data that I want to make it look newer or patched. So I end up covering it up just with blue tape. We've got questions. You've got answers or guesses. This car design was different from the previous PS2 design because it was equipped with a larger load and cubic foot capacity and it had taller car sides which enhanced the structural strength of the car. Do you know how many PS4000s the GN ordered? A, 10, B, 25, C, 40, or D, 70? You get your guess on. And pants. And we'll find out later in this episode. Here we're looking at the fourth Athern Genesis 2.0 that has had coupler issues. Well, they're set high, and these are high from the factory. It's not an ideal situation because we match up to the KD coupler height gauges. But what do you do to resolve it? I swung over to the 142s made by KD. They're called an overset shank coupler. This is a medium length, but the shank is set high into the coupler head, which, well, in turn, lowers the coupler height. This is a way to resolve the issue. Something we shouldn't have to address, but if you are having issues with coupler heights, this is a good way to address it without having to shim and modify the locomotive. Here I want to take you through my thought process when weathering a freight car to look more like the prototype. Obviously I have a prototype photo on hand, this is a PS4000. I work from the bottom up, I'm using Doc O'Brien's weathering powders with just a soft brush at the moment. The grungy gray, a little bit of black, and some of the other browns I kind of work into the car just to give it a little bit more different tones. I do work from the bottom up because more often than not, the top half of a car can be a little bit lighter. Uh, so you start at the bottom because there's more chalk loaded on the brush. Now a different type of brush here is a stubby brush. This used to be a soft brush, but the bristles wore out to the point that it became stubby. If you don't have one, you can just cut off a soft bristle brush to be able to create this. And this is a tool that allows me to be able to kind of really smudge and work in uh, a little bit more grit and grime. At the bottom of each of the ribs, I work a little bit more of the darker colors because a lot of times water and residual stuff comes down and it lands and collects at the bottom. Uh, I brush the car off, but then I move on to a blade. And you say, a blade? This is going to give me some different visual effects. Now, I use the actual ribs to keep a nice straight line to draw it right down the car. And what you're really actually doing is lifting off or scratching off some of that chalk. And you might cringe a little bit, but this is giving it effect that when you look at the prototype photo, you can see this effect happening. Uh, I use a few other things to be able to develop the looks. And in this application, it's a mechanical eraser pencil, which is a lot more than one needs. But uh, when it comes down to it, I just use the end. You can use just a regular eraser off of a pencil. It will work just fine. But what I want to do is lift the chalk off of the ribs. And if you look at the prototypes, a lot of times these ribs are lightened. So I go along and I clean these off. And uh, we'll move on a little bit further. But we'll sweep this thing off with a clean brush and pick up more in just a little bit. Can always learn a little by looking at the real deal. We are just north of North Town Yard. These guys are departing. It's a westbound. My kids and I end up swinging out here to check out the rail action. We swing behind Home Depot and just see what's up. They recognize that we're here. We have a BNSF number 4680. It is a GEC 44-9W. Means nothing to me. But maybe some of you guys out there enjoy some of this modern power. 
CSX number 818. It is a GEES 44AC-H. What does that even mean? Oh, why, that's an electrostatic 44 alternating current dash. Ha! Locomotive. We've got a few interesting things going on here. Obviously, the TTX articulated flat. That's kind of cool to see. You don't see that every day. Also, these weird loads. Some may ask. What the heck is Vestas? Well, Vestas is a wind turbine company. I'm sure you know-it-alls guessed it right away. Here's another cool load. It's kind of got a Star Wars vibe. We'll speed this up just a little bit. Hopefully you enjoyed looking at the real deal. All right, it's time to add a little grit and grime. We're using burnt umber. This is an acrylic paint that I'm going to end up using just a little toothpick and applying nicks and dings on the car. So sometimes it can be debris, dirt, rust. You call it what you will, but on the side of the freight car, you'll see just some of these uh, imperfections. So we go along and just lightly scatter some about along the rib, uh, and we'll eventually work along the roof line as well. So the application process is really just the attitude of the toothpick at a very low profile. Kind of let it scatter about and let it dance. That's the sides, now it's time to address the roof. Modeler highlights with Luke Lemon's Sue Second Sub. Luke is a Tyco modeler, and you say, what? He'll take a Tyco car, modify it to the point of looking more prototypical by shaving grabs, adding its own, painting it black, adding decals, and creating something that is prototypically accurate for his railroad. Now looking at the prototype, you can see the second and third car back. Those are the cars that Luke was modeling. And when it comes down to it, can't get more prototypical than prototype photos. And that's what makes these upgrades on these particular Tyco cars so cool to see. Now I know you can sit there and really analyze and look at the details and say, Well, that detail isn't quite right. I want to see that that thing's got one more grab. Luke is one of those guys. He's a prototype modeler. Is that a bad thing? He looks at those details, and I'm sure just like anyone else, there's a few things he can look away from. But if you look at it on his railroad, it's pretty cool to see. It's something you're not going to see at everybody's railroad. Now, this is Mr. Luke Lemons. Hello! At one of the Sioux Line conventions, hanging out there with good old Mr. Bob Rivard, another Sioux modeler. These two are actually a couple of the most influential modelers in my modeling career because they have pushed me more towards the eras and prototype. They're kind of the Batman and Robin of Sioux line modeling. Both of them have written for the Sioux with articles. Luke had recently had just done this one on the sand cars. Don't even get him started on how that whole project went. It's a perfect how-to article or a background on the sand car, but you can also pop over to SiouxLine.org and purchase a kit and build your own. But the actual overall modeling itself, very impressive. Luke goes kind of behind the scenes on his Facebook page, shows you his workbench and some of the techniques he does. Now you say, what techniques does he dive into? What doesn't he dive into? The amount of information that Luke puts out on the Sioux Second Sub is definitely cool and worth following. So if you do like some of this type of stuff, go to the Facebook page. You can even type in Sioux Second Sub. You do have to join. It is a private group, so we can keep the riffraff out. But it's definitely fun to watch and see a fellow modeler moving forward in the projects that they might be diving into. Now, if you don't have a Facebooker account or you don't want to get into the old social media world, jump into that other social media platform called YouRube, and you can type in Luke Lemon, Sue Second Sub, and you're going to find some videos of his railroad. There are some of some guy that was a dirt track racer or something like that, which you might find of interest, but Luke Lemon, Sue Second Sub, definitely worth checking out. We'll leave you with this roll by.
A job well done, Luke. Keep the kit bashing going. Moving on to the roof, there's a lot of different techniques and elements that can be added to create a nice looking roof. In this application, I'm just dry brushing the hatches to be able to bring out the detail. There's a lot of detail in these hatches. You want to be gentle, so I do use a soft brush, but as you can see on the left, it has the relief that has been highlighted. The one on the right hasn't been done. So we're going to work our way through these, just lightly dusting every single hatch to be able to bring out that little added detail. Weathering is a layering process, and this is a great step to always be able to apply to a car so it looks a little less out of the box. 100% of you should have gotten this one correct and guessed D, 70. 70. 40 were ordered in 1962 with an additional 30 in 1963, which equals 70. A few of these cars lasted into the early 2000s. Car number 71739, that was spotted in 2002. And the car we're working on is 71757. A lot of sevens. But the old process of elimination should have gotten you to 70. I hope you got it right, and if you got it wrong, I don't know if there's any hope for you. When researching the prototype, sometimes it can be tough to be able to locate the exact car you're working on. So here we've got a CB&Q car. It's still a PS4000, built around the same time as the GN. And what we're looking at here is textures. The texture we're going to add, as we mentioned before, uh, the burnt umber is an acrylic paint. I end up using a piece of sponge to be able to apply this paint to give kind of more of a chipped look. And to be able to get there, you got to tear the foam in half and you get more of a deckled edge or a rough edge of the foam. This is going to allow it to leave a texture on the car. Okay, dabbing at it. First likes to dab at it. This is a technique that is a lot like dry brushing, so you don't want to have too much paint on the sponge. And what I do is just actually wipe off a little bit of the excess and test out how much is coming off the sponge as I'm going along, because this is key. You're trying to apply just little flecks and chips on the car. You don't want it to be putting big blobs and globs. You can see just getting a little bit of wear and tear. Again, this car in my world is probably about 20 years old, so it does have a little bit of grit and grime, and I'm gonna layer over the top of this even more. I do rotate the sponge as I'm going along because I don't want to create chicken tracks, and chicken tracks is just a repetitive pattern that you can see visually on a car. Um, when using this technique, I end up just trying to be very light and build upon it. I don't just put on heavy paint and glob it on. I do work across the roof walk because a lot of times the roof walk over time from walking on it wears off that paint on the very top of the roof walk itself. Once I'm happy with the amount of acrylic I've added to the top of the car for the chips and flex, I do come back in with a little bit of chalk. Now the chalk you can apply a little bit heavier along the areas where maybe you added a little bit more chipping because it was a little bit more worn. Uh, but in this application, I'm bringing in kind of just the grungy grays and a little bit of uh, the dirty kind of look uh, using Doc O'Brien's weathering powders. This is really kind of knocking back that gray. So the main base gray isn't the out-of-the-box gray and helps those hatches kind of pop out just a little bit more. Remember the wear and tear on the top of a car a lot of times can be had from guys walking on it. There can be stuff spilled on it, as well as just the elements, whether it be rain, snow, uh, anything of that nature. But fairly happy with where we're at with this particular application. We're going to move on forward and get this thing dull coated. All right, we're in the spray booth with the Krylon Color Max Clear. It's an inexpensive way to dull coat cars if you have a lot to do. This is a good way to go about it. At this point, I do remove the blue tape and I will apply the trucks. And once the trucks are on, we're going to have a finished car. All right, as we take a look at the finished product, there's one thing I must say that layering is definitely the way to go in weathering a freight car. Different techniques is always good to mix and match as we went with the chocks, the acrylics, and even some of the removal process of using the X-Acto knife. In the end, it turned out all right. 70s. Remember to please like, tag, share, and follow, as well as subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you'd like to see the hobby grow, a simple click goes a long way. Thanks for watching. You done shoot about as good as you model. Well, I'm back. I had a few people asking where's Colin at. I ain't going anywhere. I just ain't a tension whore like that old curmudgeon. He's all about getting camera time and carrying on about what he don't like. Well, I don't like him. But when it comes down to it, Colin's back to answer a few questions. So, I ain't going away. Anytime soon. 
Hopefully you enjoyed the content of this episode. If you want to see more, you can check out more episodes of the GN in 1970, as well as Sue the Milwaukee Road. You can see a tour of the GN in 1970 and even a few other layout tours. Nonetheless, check out the content and hopefully you enjoy that as well as future episodes. Thanks for watching. <laughs>